Hello, my dearest friends. Just wanted to come to the stream a little early today, just to take a look around and have a little bit of chat with you guys. So, Moto45, welcome. Koshik, we are using USA Est. Sound is not coming or let me know if everything is okay. Let's do a sound check. It, it has a slight delay even if I'm using low latency. YouTube has like I think five to six seconds delay on what I'm doing here and when you are seeing that. So that might be the reason. So how is everybody's Sunday? I hope that camping trip was great Moto45. I love that Tundra. One of the trucks that I want to get my hands on, which I cannot because my wife says if you buy a truck we will have some trouble. <laughs> she doesn't want me to drive a truck for some reason, I don't know. I used to have one, maybe she hated that one, that might be one of the reasons. Because I was not at home at all over the weekends going camping or off-roading or mudding, so that might be... I believe the biggest reason. Yeah, the water part looks nice and like a big shout out and congrats to your grandma. She's awesome, like on a canoe with you. So let me ask, who is planning to join the flight along with me? I know Steep Emperor from the last stream is somewhere around here. He said he is, so looking to see if he's around. But we'll 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 talk about that. Yeah, I mean you can make her the battle, but like getting on a canoe at that age man that's 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 awesome hi princess alice welcome did you guys saw nightbot around i'm not sure if he's joining the stream let's see Come on, Nightbot, you can make it. Let's change the view, shall we? Let's take a look at the, the real screen rather than stream starting. And I will switch and share the route with you guys. And maybe we will we will just do a proper departure briefing this time. Maybe. So Ah, okay, model forty-five. That makes sense. That makes sense, and we will, we will, we will do a little bit. You know, take a look at the aircraft. Talk about what procedures we can cover during the stream without making it too long and boring for you guys. And you know, take it from there. One thing different. I put the route up there, and I have an overlay that will track the progress of the flight, so you guys get to see the indicated airspeed. Um, distance, altitude, heading, etc. So that's one of the things I've made different for this stream. And I tend to use a lot of side applications and then that scares me because sim can 
crash anytime. I'm also typing to um, Steep Emperor through Discord because he says he's in, at the airport with me and ready for us. But it's gonna take some time for us to get ready before we start. So let me see the chat and see who is here. Again, YouTube algorithm doesn't display who is here, who is not. So if you are watching right now, because I am seeing on YouTube there are five viewers. Just say hi so that I can greet and welcome you guys. And thanks for joining. Hopefully. Nightbot will be around sometime soon. I'm not sure what's taking him so long. He's seeing everything, but well. Sharik, welcome. Hi, how are you? Richard, welcome to the stream. How are you, my friend? Oh, there's someone pop next next to me. Let's take a look. Who is, who is that? Oh, there it is. Nightbot decided to join us. Oh, Steep Emperor. I'm not sure if you are really in an Airbus A320, but welcome. I hope everybody is doing great. Great From Qatar. Oh, wow. So there are some, some uh, international agreements between Qatar and Turkey, if I am not mistaken that happened most recently within the last two three years as you see nightbot started to flood the chat with his own messages to bug you about stuff so but let me jump to the cockpit and start start discussing but if you guys like let's take a look at the flight plan before we do so uh, even before powering up the aircraft, shall we? All right, let's switch screens and I will pop the Navigraph window open and you will get to see the entire route and how I planned it and I will brief you a little bit on what we will be doing. As you see, this is the Navigraph screen. You guys should be seeing this right now. We are right here at Coventry. We will depart from, I believe that is runway 26. Let's take a look. Oh, 23. So we are departing runway 23 towards um, southwest. Okay, and then starting immediately tracking this VOR, Hanley VOR, 113.65, which is uh, the holding point for Heathrow. When you are on approach into Heathrow, there are multiple holding points where you need to stay there. Sharik, I will be discussing how to prepare, but I can just go walk you through on this one on how to do it if you have Navigraph. I usually use a uh, little nav map most of the time, but for, for stream I just wanted to have Navigraph open and just uh, don't want to use multiple applications. The crack was 90 in the Isle, Isle of Man. Oh, Irish folk song? <laughs> so anyway, um, we'll track Hanley, right, and then We'll head um, north towards TNT VOR, Trent, I believe. And I tried to match this to the Victor Airways or, you know, the airways you see around the black lines. There was not an easy solution because these are all GPS waypoints and I cannot perfectly track this. So we are going to do old school. Track that VOR, TNT, and then head northwest a little bit and track while we are 
from while we are we are going to track um, the Runnels Way and DB station and when we reach that that is our ILS approach into the runway for um, Isle of Man and this is how it looks like we'll pass over here take a left turn follow the traffic pattern and use this teardrop uh, that will take us to the ILS landing into the airport yeah, Navigraph requires paid stuff. Uh, Sharik, you're right. Uh, I suggest uh, Little Navmap. Little Navmap does the same thing and it somehow automates it. And I will be sharing the uh, the course for each uh, segment of the flight, like what course we should be on to track that VOR properly. And we will discuss about that. For that, I will be using a uh, little new map. Anyway, let's get back to the simulator view. This is the flight plan briefing. We'll take runway 23, track uh, Hanali VOR, head, no, head north, track TNT, and then from there, northwest to Val, and then more towards northwest to runners way and then that will be our landing all right let me move this out of the way there you go yeah that's a good idea model 45 i have an ipad with a cracked screen i need to get the screen fixed and planning to utilize it for the same purpose so we'll see Simbrief uh, Sharik gives you a flight plan, however, it gives you a GPS flight plan. Although, let me jump in and you guys tell me if it's too loud for you, uh, the audio of the simulator. I can to turn it down a little bit if it's hard to hear what I'm saying. But what's gonna happen is. Um, you can use Simbrief, but then what you need to do is you cannot do old school navigation because it's a um, it's a GPS waypoint flight plan generated through Simbrief. So for that in DC6 you need to enable the Asobo GNS430, which is a GPS unit, and then you can track a GPS flight plan uh, properly, which I'm planning to. Uh, record a tutorial about how to do the flight plan using the GPS unit available in this aircraft but today our plan is to do uh, old-school navigation okay Sh shall we start going and let me do this let me turn on my track AR and hope that it's not gonna fail this time like it did last time and see how that goes is it gonna come on? There we go. Okay, that's good. So we will do the pre-flight ourselves and use the artificial flight engineer to verify what we did. Okay, so that is the plan. And we start with turning the batteries to on. Let's check we have ground power so we can switch to ground power. And then we will start with turning the inverters on, turning the generators on, and then we'll go up here, turn the passenger signs on, and position lights to steady. So that's the overhead I'm trying to remember. We'll go over here, we'll set our cruising altitude, which is going to be 12,000 feet for today. We will adjust that. So that the cabin pressure is set so this is the pressurization that is there we'll set the cabin temperature to around 70 degrees we'll turn on the turbine to keep starting the cooling the cabin we'll open all the cowl flaps right 
and then this is pretty much what we need to do at the overhead panel except the cabin heater master we need to turn that on too and there is the cockpit temperature switch here if you want it a little bit warmer you can adjust from there now we need to turn the tank selectors to main tanks and then the prop to full forward and let's adjust our throttles a little bit and this is pretty much it hey blue energy welcome to the stream yeah it's it's looking great we love the i love this this aircraft it's 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 a bd so um what else i think this is pretty much it except mixture we will deal with those later on uh, we'll turn on the radios right so radios are on we'll turn this transponder to standby that is also on we'll set a transponder code for ourselves that is going to be 1071 hey mega zen and captain welcome to the stream thank you yeah i'm trying to give some information not just starting to stream directly Koshik, take off runway is runway 23. We will be taking off runway 23. And the route is at the video description if anybody wants to follow along with. Uh, I believe you can do this with a, with a G1000 aircraft or perfectly fine with a aircraft with modern avionics because the VORs they can track as GPS waypoints. So you should be fine if you uh, plug in the flight plan using the unit itself, not through the world map menu. So that's that's about it at least that's what i learned so far i'm trying to still improve my knowledge but let's ask the other artificial flight engineer to verify what we did Completed. but he did extra is he turned the beacon to on because we are going to start the engines Oil cores and, cow flaps. and he is also uh closing the front door not completely that stays open we need to take Set. care of that manifold and duct pressure checked radios checked doors and hatches okay so he's gonna verify yeah that that livery i like model 45 the british midlands it's a good one so he's closing the doors and everything now. Closed. Door warning lights. Out. Gear pins. Removed. Three on board. Seat belts and pedals. Adjusted. Throttles. Yeah, I agree. Blue, I think that's true, Blue Energy. I mean, this kind of aircraft with radial engines. I think it's impossible to fly with one person. Like, if I was doing everything and trying to stream at the same time, it would have been very hard for me. Well, we are carrying passengers, Model 45, virtual passengers. I thought about using the self loading cargo I have. Uh, however, it is still not quite compatible with DC 6. It has some. Um, bugs that need sorted out and I was scared that it might crash the simulator so that's why I decided not to use it anyway so we are ready to start the engines shall we go ahead and do that I think that's time so let me unpause my track AR so that I can look around and what's happening again so the track AR is giving some problems again when you pause it i think that's what's happening could be my settings i'm not sure but let's see if i can get rid of track ar and start it again without crashing the sim and let's start it again and see what happens if not we will stick to the camera views and do not use track ar because i'm i'm scared that it will give me some problems which it is now because it's not recognizing the game as far as i can tell i don't know what's happening it's it's been my experience with track ar recently 
let's let's get rid of this yeah the track ar thinks that it is working but it's not recognizing my my sim oh sim is going to crash i was expecting this so see when you play with things sorry guys we'll get back shortly here in a little bit And we are not going to use track AR. I was suspecting this is going to happen. With Microsoft Flight Simulator, it's it's quite possible. So I apologize. We will be back in business shortly here in a little bit. It's gonna take some time to load this in. And we can use that time to talk a little bit so again sorry for the inconvenience here it happens and it just makes me very nervous when it happens in the street so we are we are coming back don't worry and we will just disregard track ar and use our camera views i think that's a better solution than risking the crash to desktop again I don't want to take that risk one more time, especially in the middle of the flight, which might be very bad. I don't know, I mean, we were able to stream for, I think, close to three hours last time when we were doing the World Tour live stream. So for those of you who just joined the stream, uh, I started doing a live stream series to do a World Tour. Uh, as a group flight for for the people to join and fly together we started off of istanbul and flew all the way to sarajevo last week on wednesday i believe it was a three hour stream and we had a couple people join us uh, spooky was one of them um, who was with us then again um, Sai uh, and on the Discord server, who is um, a steep emperor, was with us. Koshik, I'm not sure if you were with us during that live stream, so yeah, Megazen and Captain, it, it happens, and especially, I mean, I have 30, 32 gigs of RAM, I'm not thinking this is a RAM issue. This probably is a sim issue where it it cannot process something and then decides to like shut it off shut it down and you know go black but well it happens yeah uh, did you watch the last part of that moto 45 the landing was like a little bit challenging because i had to take over after the ILS approach looking too high and had to nose dive a little bit so the passengers were not that happy okay we are back we will use ramp one again and then let me make sure we have the setup for multiplayer which we do oh really rebar welcome to the stream yeah we were in sarajevo last time bosnia herzegovina and next world tour stream we will be departing from sarajevo again and we will be heading to geneva yeah i mean you don't have to necessarily i was curious whether you did or not but it was great to have you on board during most part of the stream and i understand it was it was a late night stream from nine to midnight so i understand People has to work the next day, so the weekday streams, I think I should plan a little bit earlier than that time, if I can. That makes it a little bit possible for people to join and stay. It's going to crash again, I'm... Oh, crap. Come on, simulator, what's happening? Alright, at this point, other than trying it again, I don't have any other chance, because if I shut down the computer and start again... We will lose the stream, so we are going to hope that the sim will start. Sorry guys, this this is... Uh, I shouldn't have tried track AR. 
I assume. So this is the second try. Hopefully this time it will go through. And let me see if I can free up some RAM by closing some of the stuff I have running. That might give us the power we need. Yeah, I'm not sure it's not... I don't know, Moto45, what's happening. I mean, back-to-back -back two CTDs. I hope it doesn't happen when we are up in the air. I mean, I'm okay with it start happening at the start, even if, even if it's not pleasing. Uh, we are still at the airport. I might try to re reinstall the Trek AR45, that might be one of the reasons. <coughs> the other reason is, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, if I reset the computer, Rebar, YouTube thinks that this stream is over and the scheduled stream disappears, so I have no way of coming back to it again. Therefore, I think restarting is not an option at this point. So we will just see what happens this time. If we can get to the airport without crashing to desktop, I think we should be fine. And I'm gonna start like closing couple applications that I have down below so that it doesn't um, use CPU or I'm not, I don't think it's, it's a memory issue. I have 32 gigs of RAM. It might be a CPU or graphics card issue, which is odd because the sim is the only thing that uses my graphics card at the moment. So, we'll see about that. It happens, I know, it's not pleasing, but there are things that I cannot control, so we'll come back to it. Uh, I haven't planned the date for the next stream from Sarajevo to Geneva, uh, Rebar. Uh, it will be... Yeah, uh, it will be posted on Discord and YouTube as a scheduled live stream. Megazen and Captain, of course you can get to join me in the game. I'm using USA East server. If you use the same server, we will be able to see each other in the game. Okay, let's try this one more time. Same ramp, same settings. And hit fly. Hopefully this will go through. Yeah, Rebar, the, the stream will be scheduled and you will probably, if you have the notifications turned on, you will probably receive a notification about the scheduled stream. It might be a software issue too. Because every time I start live streaming, I start and reset my computer and restart it just to start fresh. But, well, I should have turned on Trek AR before launching the sim. That might be one of the reasons. Because when I do the opposite, it tends to crash the desktop for some reason or halts and, you know, doesn't work at all. But we are back. That's good news. Yay! Okay, let's do this. Free flight checks pretty quickly. So, batteries to on, ground power we have, turn the inverters, passenger signs and position lights to steady, passenger signs to on. Let's turn the beacon on too, because that's what the artificial flight engineer will do. Let's get the altitude set for the pressurization. 12,000 feet, right there. Cabin temperature to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Cabin heater master to on. Anything else that I'm forgetting up here? The call flaps. Let's turn on the radios while we are here. I'm not doing this in an order, I know that for sure. But at the end of the day, artificial flight engineer will correct us if we did something wrong.
when I'm not streaming, it doesn't uh, cause any problems, Model 45. But when I'm streaming, when the streaming software is also taking up some memory and graphics card to stream it over onto YouTube, I think that's where I'm starting to have problems. If I'm by myself not streaming, I see less problems happening. So the tank selection is done. Let's turn on the transponder. Let's set our squad code again. Oops. 1071. Anything over here? Probably not. We are good on this side. Overhead is done. And let's ask artificial fluidity engineer to correct us. So let's open, turn on the DME uh, display. And go ahead, sir. Verify what we did. Completed. Voice recorder. Oh yeah, great, uh, magazine and captain. Uh, we would love to see you. And uh, don't worry, you can stay as little as you want or as more as you want. Sit. Manifold and duct pressure. Checked. Radios. Let me fix something and. Refresh the screen. There you go. Checked. Doors and hatches. We'll get the weather information for the airport and see what the Closed. pressure is. It's showing 1024 hectopascals. Out. Gear pins. Removed. Let's set the pressure. One zero two four. That sounds about right. We will cheat and hit the B key to verify. So okay, I was close. Forward and three. Before start checks complete. Okay, we completed the before start checks, so we can start the engines now. To do that, we'll just go up here. Boost pump is on, engine selector is on 3, engine number 3. We'll start the starter. He's gonna start counting. 6. At 9, we'll turn the white magnetos to on. Then 12. There we go. She is firing up. Let's take a look. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Engine 3 is on. We'll adjust the throttle so that we don't rev it too much and keep it at idle. Uh, Megazen and Captain, the runway 23 for takeoff. Okay, engine selector to 4, boost pump for engine 4 is on, and let's hit it. There's 12. There is the engine kicking in. Mixture is to auto rich and engine 4 had a good start too. Let's get back. Engine selector to engine number 2. Boost pump 2 is on. And we are waiting for these switches to reset themselves. And then we will hit start again. There we go. There's 9, 12. there's 12, engine 2 is now kicking, and there we go, engine 2, good start there, and we have the last engine, let's select the engine 1 for engine start, turn the boost pump on, wait these switches to reset, Oh yeah, Model 45. It would be awesome to ride on one of these aircraft in real life. Okay, let's get this started. Three. And he's counting six. the blades. Six. Nine, Nine blades. Magneto's on. Twelve. Twelve. Hit the starter. And there is the engine one. We have four good engine starts, which is a good thing. Oh, Rebar, I have flight sim economy, but I'm not using it because I also have on-air company. Megazen and Captain, we are going to cruise at 12,000 feet for today. 
Okay, so let's do the after start checks as far as I know, and then the artificial flight engineer will correct us on anything that we forgot. The engine starter selector to off, and I'm going to keep the cockpit tooltips for you guys for to see everything. Uh, the nav is the route is in the video description, but let me see. I can paste it to the chat too. So let me paste it to the chat. Uh, and yep, let me let me do that. Give me a second, and we will do the after start checks. Uh, when I have the route passed it to the stream, I'm gonna start using uh, Nightbot to paste the route uh, at some intervals. But yeah, we will we will look into that. And the last one was, yep. That's the NDB, and the NDB's frequency is what? 359. Okay. So the route is now in the chat, uh, Mega Zenin Captain. So we will going to depart Trek Honolulu VOR, and then TNT VOR, and then WAL VOR. Uh, and then we are going to track the NDB station and then do an ILS to runway 08 at Isle of uh, Man. Okay, after start checks, boost pumps to off. Alright, engine selector is to off. And we'll switch to plane battery, we don't need ground power anymore. We'll turn around, go to the ramp manager, disconnect the ground power unit. What else I have to do? Uh, at this point, we can tune the first two uh, VOR station frequencies. The Honolulu VOR is 113.65. We'll keep that on Navy Radio 1. 113.65. And then the standby will be the next VOR, which is TNT. That is 115.70. We'll tune that here. 115.70. And we'll do exact opposite of this on the radio 2 as a backup and also track the second VOR to see when we are going to start receiving the signal from that one. 113.65 Alright, the VORs are tuned now and we are receiving the signal from one of them. As you see, the first VOR on the radio 1 is towards that direction. And what we can do is the course for those of you who doesn't have it, because it's not in the video description, the course is one degree. Uh, I'm sorry, the course to Hanley VOR is 264, so we are going to set the course to 264 so that we can track it using the autopilot uh, when we are up in the air, or we can track it manually ourselves. So, course is set for Hanley VOR, and we are going to ask this guy to do the after start checks for us. The A320 will be okay. It should it should follow the same route. It can track VORs. Uh, Mega Zenin Captain, I think you should be fine. Just let me know if you were successful to plan this uh, flight into the A320. <clears throat> so the after start checks are complete. We are ready to roll to do runway, but I'm gonna go outside and see who is here. Step Emperor, you're here. And. Mega Zenin Captain, are you going to start at the runway or somewhere close to us? Because I'm about to start taxiing to the runway. And we will we will do the before takeoff checks as much as I remember and then artificial flight engineer can do it or we can use him this time and I will I can focus on taxiing to the runway. Speaking of which, our taxi route is quite simple. We'll take. Uh, we have to take this route, 
maybe go around a little bit and then enter the runway and go towards the end and then turn around for takeoff. Oh yeah, probably it was allowed, Model 45. So that is the taxi route, left turn, right, uh, another, uh, right, slight right turn I guess this is. And then left turn, right turn, into the runway, or we can just make it simple, left turn, right turn, hit the runway, go towards the end, and then turn around. Either way works. That's ahead of us, and I think... Uh, so someone pushing. Steep Emperor is pushing back, so... Let's wait for him. Let's turn off the parking brake. It's good. And then we'll add some power to get up to about 1000 feet after Steep Emperor pushes back and gets moving. Let's see, there are a lot of people here today. There we go, Steep Emperor. I'm not sure what plane you are using, but I see you in an Airbus A320 and your engines are not running right now, according to Microsoft Flight Simulator, so not sure, it's just putting a generic model, I assume, but I think it's okay. Alright, he is almost out of the way, shall we get rolling? I think we should start moving. One thing I like to do before we start moving is... So the hydraulics are on, we can unlock the rust lock so that we have full control of the throttles because it's blocking engine 2 and 3 to a certain throttle. Uh, you cannot move them all the way up, that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, trims are at zero so we didn't say play with the trims uh, so they should be set to their center positions. And I'd like to set flaps 20 at this point. Because we know the artificial flight engineer will do it for us. But let's set flaps 20. One more. There we go. And then the rest we will leave it to the artificial flight engineer. Like taking care of the cowl flaps for takeoff. Which they, he will set to 4 degrees each. We can do that too when we are taxiing. But let's, let's get going. Brandon, hi, welcome to the stream. My top 5 in Microsoft Flight Simulator? Well, Airsoft CRJ700, uh, fly-by-wire A320, recently this DC-6, and for GA aircraft I like to fly with TBM, or uh, Beechcraft uh, Bonanza G36, so that's 5 for you. Let's get rolling guys, increase the throttle slowly up to a thousand RPM, around 10 mini inches manifold pressure, we don't want to go over a thousand while we are on the ground and she's gonna start moving. And we, looks like we have to pass through Steep Emperor, which is okay at this point, but we are going to, to, we are going to take that left turn and then right turn all the way into the runway. The shortest route with less turns. That's what I'm tempted to do. Although we can just go direct, and there is the runway ahead of us, and there is no taxiway close by, so we can just take the runway, which might make it a little bit more simpler. Speaking of which, we can, I think, turn on the landing lights because we are about to enter an active runway. Let's extend them and let's turn to the runway and just go to the end and turn around. I'm not sure why we stopped that fast or rapidly. We are still at 1000 RPMs, the aircraft should be moving. Come on, buddy, we can do this. So they are now probably extended, because it takes 5 seconds. And let me take a look at the chat. <coughs> yeah, I haven't tried the, you know, the improvement mod, mod for the TBM. I heard news about the developer uh, abandoning that mod. Is that true, Brandon J? Do you know?
Okay, we are on the runway, going towards the end. We we'll probably need to turn the position nice to flash, because this aircraft doesn't come with a strobe light, as far as I remember. Let's get to the middle. Not good piloting there. So, it, does that still work, even if it's not being updated for quite some time? And I hope we are talking about the same improvement mod that is under the Flight Simulator's forums and flightsim.to, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, we can cut the throttle now, because we are about to make that sort of U-turn. Let's go towards the right side of the runway. Okay, I'm gonna give it a try. Yeah, that I'm talking about, opening all the doors and whatnot. Okay, that was the one I was talking about. I'll give it a try, maybe we should stream with TBM uh, at some point in one of the live streams. Hello. All right, let's turn around and or start turning around here and align ourselves with the runway. This is a fairly narrow runway to make a U-turn, but hopefully we will manage it. Although I need some more throttle to keep the aircraft going, because when it's turning, it's losing its uh, acceleration. Okay, let's double check that Mega Zenin Captain. Hold on, give me a second. Let me make this turn and then I will check the server real quick. There's Steep Emperor coming around. And we will align ourselves with the center and then I will check the server. Okay, let's get ahead of Steep Emperor here, so that he can make the same turn. Oh, Mega Zenon, I see you, you're right there. Right there. In an A320. So you are in the correct server. I see you. Oh, working title CJ4, that's one of my favorite too, that makes it up to six aircraft. Because, yeah, it's a great aircraft with the mod and recent changes. Oh my god, is it fun to fly. Cool, so now we are ready for before takeoff checks. Let's set the cowl flaps to 4 degrees each and I can just go up to here so that we can look together. Cowl flaps set for takeoff, all 4 degrees. And for takeoff we are going to turn the boost pumps to on. So the boost pumps are on. We'll arm the automatic feathering system. And this is all I know on what needs to be done. Oh, the transponder to altitude reporting. And we'll ask artificial flight engineer to boost do pumps. the rest. Boost pumps on low. Fuel selector and cross feed. Uh, I think that's why we like it, Brandon J. The analog displays and old school navigation without the help of modern avionics. It makes it a little bit more intuitive, uh, immersive, so that's, that's the reason I like it. So as you see from the course, as you see from our nav display, VOR, uh, Hanili VOR is right around that, that side, so we will make a slight right turn when we take off and climb up to 1500 feet. And it's 7.1 miles away. For the rest of the flight, 
I'm going to use the artificial flight engineer because I'm not quite yet knowledgeable about the takeoff process and what needs to be done when focusing on the aircraft. Uh, that's always has been the case, Brandon, for payware aircraft, which are quality aircraft. Uh, not only for Microsoft Flight Simulator, same for X-Plane 11, Prepar 3D as well. Payware aircraft with deep system simulation, they are not that, they are not cheap. So we will be doing a dry takeoff because our weight is below say 86,000 pounds. So let's go and ask him to do it. Dry takeoff. He's gonna stabilize the engines at 30 inches manifold pressure right here. Mega Zenin Captain, I'm not sure. We, I saw you for a second right over there from my screen window and you were here. And as I promised, let me show you this server. It's USA East server that I'm in. So he's gonna set pull power, 53 and a half inches manifold pressure, and that will be our takeoff power setting for this aircraft, and we will get rolling. Let's release the brakes. Full power set. I don't like illegal stuff. Brandon G. If you are using Brandon J. If you are using something that is done by others to make money off of it, it's no more, no different than stealing. So I am against piracy. Hundred percent. All the softwares I have on my computer are purchased and licensed and legal. Oops, oops, oops. I'm, I did something bad. I was looking to the chat window. Sorry guys, but let's let's just correct ourselves and take off. That was a bad takeoff. All right, cast the rate. Gear is coming up. We will climb like this for a little bit. Yeah, I was looking to the other monitor for Model 45, and I didn't realize that I was going sideways. Okay, we will start our right turn towards Hanley VOR slowly. Uh, Brandon, I'm not a real pilot. I wish I was. And I live in the US, but I'm originally from Turkey. Okay, so that will get the needle towards the center, which tells us that we are flying towards that VOR, but not necessarily on our course. So we should start keeping. Uh, we should keep turning to the right until we see this needle moving towards the center and that will be our uh, indicator that we are joining to the course so that is good enough to me let's go and keep this heading for a little bit and we'll trim the aircraft for climb because we are on climb power now we are climbing it at around 1000 feet Somewhere between 1000 and 1500 feet per minute, which is a good setting for this aircraft. And as you see, the needle started moving to the middle, so we should make a left turn to interfere, set the VOR, and we will co make small adjustments. Uh, I am working as for a medical device company as their training manager, Brandon J. I'm in medical device industry. Okay, we will center the needle. Keep going like this and it will center itself automatically. So it's hard to adjust when trying to keep an eye on the chat screen too. So I might go silent a little bit guys, because I'm trying to adjust to the course. Or the easier way is to, is to ask the uh, autopilot to do this for us. I think we can do that too so that I can focus to you guys. So let's turn on the gyro pilot. Gyro pilot is now on and let's move to the localizer mode. So he will then it will adjust itself to the course and get back to the VOR. Because we are all over the place right now. 
And the other VOR signal is here, so what we can do is when the aircraft makes the turn and levels off, we can do uh, we can start tracking the other VOR because the Honolulu VOR was very close, and I'm pretty sure we are passed over that VOR. How old I was when I developed uh, flight simulator simulation as my hobby? I think it started with the FSX back in. Uh, I believe 2004 when it came out. I flew, you know, I just played aircraft or airplane games, not simulators, even before that, but it all started with FSX, just started with Microsoft. So as you see, let me explain what's happening here. We are on course, but we are tracking away from that VOR on the same course, which is not correct. Because our next course is one degrees towards TNT VOR. So to adjust that, we will switch to gyro pilot, set our course to one, and then the aircraft should adjust and get back on track. Let me take care of this before we are too far out so that we can turn around and get back to our original, and then we can switch to the second VOR station as our primary navigation source and then turn the gyro pilot back to localizer mode and it will turn around and start tracking that VOR station so that's 42 miles away it should be easy for us to get back on track without uh, worrying about passing over that VOR as well and while we are now tracking the second nav on our flight plan the third was 114 decimals one zero and we'll keep that as our standby frequency here and we'll try to do the opposite on one four decimal one zero on this side and that will be our backup and visual aid to display that our, if we are receiving the signal from that which we already are so that's a good thing all right let me see i was 42 uh i was at that time i think 2004 uh, 26 years old magazine in captain can't you see us still oh my Okay, look at the view, guys. This is UK, close to Liverpool. There are a lot of activity around us. And I'm looking. Mega Zenon, I saw you. You are ahead of us, right there. Yes, I am 43 now, Brandon. I am old. <laughs> I see you, Megazen. If that's you, I see you there. And there is an aircraft taking off right there. You see that, guys? That is going to take off in a second. Anyway, let's get back inside and see. If we are back on track, we are still not, but we are probably going towards that because the needle is getting close to the middle, so we will be on track in no time. Oh no, I mean a hobby is a hobby, it's for anyone, Brandon Jay. I mean I like to do what I like to do, so flight simulation is my one of my number one hobbies, maybe if not number one. Uh, motorcycles and two wheels anything that's on two wheels is my second one yeah I saw you right there Mega Zen and Captain yes you're still there so I don't know what's happening on your end oh yeah Rebar you are as old as I am looks like we share the same uh, same age group okay looks like we are getting back on track guys it's gonna track that 
keep that needle at the center and we are passing 11,000 feet so we are getting to almost about 11,000 feet getting to our cruising altitude. Model 45, I want to get a private pilot license so bad. And yes, yeah, Cessna 172 might be a good starting point for an aircraft. I would love to get my PPL at some point. Okay, as you see, we are tracking towards the Neo VOR and we are tracking towards the correct course or on the correct course because the needle is right at the center, that center I would say. My gamer tag should be the sim pilot gamer tag, uh, Megazen and Captain. Okay, getting to 12,000, so let's shallow the climb so that we don't bounce around and make the passengers unhappy. So we'll pitch down and try to maintain a hundred feet per minute climb rate like so and it will slow and shallow the climb so that we don't bounce when we turn the altitude hold right here <laughs> Brandon thank you that's a compliment my man yes VOR to VOR let's shallow the descent a little bit more I still feel like it's too uh, too much vertical speed to turn on the altitude hold. I don't want the plane to bounce, so I will adjust it as we get closer to 12,000 and even just zero out the vertical speed with pitching down. That looks good. We are slowly getting to 12,000. We should have no problems with holding the altitude with this vertical speed. Right there, dead center, 12,000. It will bounce just a little bit, but not as too bad. So the passengers shouldn't feel anything. I am doing 231 knots ground speed and 210 indicated air speeds Brandon but this is the DME display we have 26 miles away from the next VOR we have 6 minutes to reach there and we are doing 241 knots ground speed a little over 210 so now we are going to ask the artificial flight engineer to set cruise power Megazenon, you are on my windscreen, right in front of me, man. Okay, we are on cruise power, looks like it should stabilize the speed. And what we can do from this point is enjoy the views, keep an eye on the VOR and switch to the next frequency. Oh yeah, the C6 is not a fast aircraft. This is the cruising speed you'll get most of the time from this aircraft. Even with four radial engines, they are not as powerful as a turboprop. And besides, TBM is a, is a light aircraft. This guy, if you look here, empty way, is, empty way of this aircraft is six, over 61 uh, tons. This is in pounds, so 61 tons in pounds, not metric tons and I'm not sure how heavy the TBM is up. It's, it's lighter and it has more power. Five minutes to the next VOR and for those of you who are following the plan, our next course is 293. So when we are 10 miles away, we will get back to gyro pilot mode and then set and adjust the course and because we are picking the signal, we will switch to the next navigation source. If we weren't picking the signal, we will keep the same source, but this display over here, let me explain that just a little bit. This arrow is pointing and telling us that we are traveling towards the VOR station, and there is a down arrow which tells that we are tra traveling away from that VOR station. 
so when we can track away on the same course which is no different than tracking the other VOR station until we receive a signal if we weren't picking up the signal from the next VOR station on our flight plan. Uh, yeah, traveling from point A to point B takes a lot of time in this aircraft, but it's a lot of fun at the same time, Brandon. And the textures of this aircraft, they are second to none. Look at this detail, guys. I mean, uh, this cannot auto land, but it has an ILS, so it can follow an ILS guidance system and land using ILS with low visibility conditions or situations. In fact, I did a couple landings where there is zero to none visibility until like 300 feet to the ground and it did it perfectly fine but it doesn't have any auto thrust you are in charge of the throttles and rpm and it doesn't have a, a gps i mean you can get a gps unit as i said under the options you can enable an asobo gns 430 gps which will follow a gps flight plan perfectly fine and do ILS and procedures like you would do in a uh, aircraft with acute with GPS, so that's no problem. I'm just not using it because I like it this old school way. Alright, let's go outside, shall we? Take a look around a little bit and see who is around. Steep Emperor is right there. I don't know if these other people, Redneck Pilots, and who is this other person? Oh, Mega Zenin, you made a pass. That was a good catch for me. I see you're going backwards. Murky, I don't know if he's with us, or they might be uh, other unit players uh, flying in the simulator. But yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, you follow the ILS manually in order 45, and when you are at about 1500 to 1000 feet, you take over control, and you should be landing as the pilot. You shouldn't trust the systems to auto land you if um, if there is nothing that requires you to do it. Like if there is obviously in an A320, if there is zero visibility and if you have to do auto land that's instructed by the ATC, then I guess that's the way to do it. But there are different company policies for airlines as well that the pilots the pilots needs to follow. So you can't see me, I can't see you. That's kind of odd, Mega Zenin. That is kind of odd. I'm not sure why that's happening though. Let's see. I can spot you again. So you are there. Steep Emperor is right above us. Flying a little bit higher and faster than us. So he will probably be passing us in a little bit. <coughs> that's interesting why you don't see me. So as you see, the nightbot is bugging you guys with some... I need to change the intervals on this. It's very strange, but well, so be it. At least I have you. Uh, I can record you and put you on the live stream. I have your name tag. Uh, that makes it very hard for you to get closer, I guess, without seeing where I'm at. Um, but I'm not sure what's happening. One suggestion though, or are you seeing other players, or did you turn off the name tags? That's I wanted to ask. Alright, 10 miles, I guess, is it 10 or 18? Can't see well. It's 8, oh, it's... Oh, we're tracking away from that VOR, I was like distracted again. Oh yeah, we passed the Hanel, uh, we passed the TNT VOR, so we should adjust the course. I was, uh, I do it most of the time. I, I keep talking and I just forget what I was supposed to do. So the course is 293. I will set that and then get back to the localizer mode, which should start tracking. And we have the signal from the other one, so why not use that one and get back on track again. Alright, so the plane will do its thing, we will set the other frequency, which is the 
NBB station, so we will be tracking this frequency for the rest of the flight. But no need to change the other frequency, and then we can do this opposite so that we see them separately. Okay, we're turning around now. And what I will do in the meantime is I will tune to ADF, which is 2359. So let's tune it to here. 359. Let's get it back to the active frequency for ADF. So this is the ADF display and this is the ADF course needle. And the course is same, which is 310. So we'll set our ADF compass to 310 and it's easier if I go backwards and this needle will tell us where that ADF beacon is it doesn't count the distance ADF uh, NDBs doesn't have DMEs so we will fly towards using this needle and this nail display here for the ADF Yeah, Brandon G, I don't know, this is an old plane and my first flight was with a Boeing 737, so I think I, I missed that that time to fly a DC-6 to somewhere. Uh, the name tag setting, Megazen and Captain, is under General Options. And I think it's under this accessibility. No, under MISC. Ah, it's not here. Under traffic. I'm trying to help you here. Just give me a second, guys. Let me help him. Assistance options. No, not assistance. It should be under here. It should be under accessibility. Oh, it's under data. Is it? No. Oh, it's under traffic? Maybe? I'm having problems finding it. Oh, found it? Oh, it's under traffic. Okay. So see, tell me if you can see us now, if it was turned off. So the aircraft is trying to get back on track. Okay, we are 49 miles away from the second. And we should think about our descent now. So we are at 12,000 feet, we are 49 miles away and after that 49 miles we will hit wall VOR and we have another 67 miles from wall VOR to Isle of Man. So that means, let's calculate where we need to start our descent. So we are roughly 110 miles away from our destination okay we are at 12,000 feet and for the ILS approach into Isle of Man the altitude we need to descend down to is let me check what it was the altitude is 2,000 feet, so we need to get down to 2,000 feet to capture uh, the glide slope, okay? So that means we need to descend 10,000 feet. Times that by 5, that's 50,000, divided by 1,000, so we should start our descent at least no later than 50 miles to the destination, and I like to keep a 20 mile buffer, so we will start our descent when we are 70 miles away from our destination which is before we hit the while we are 67 right around while we are we are going to start our descent we will keep the cruise power during descent and we will switch to uh, descent power when we are around 5000 feet and when we are 20 miles away, we'll do the in-range checks and then 10 miles to the, to the destination, we'll do the before landing checks. So that's the plan. So that's sort of the briefing to you. Let me see if you are still around here. Mega Zen. Oh, there you are. 
I see you now. So I have three people behind me, Megazen and Steve Emperor and Pony GT68. So I'm not sure if all of you guys are, I mean, if Pony is following us on the street too. Am I a boxing fan? Well, I used to watch some boxing matches, but that doesn't make me a fan, I believe. When there is a big game, a big match, I usually watch it, like a heavyweight championship or something. But other than that, I don't regularly follow boxing brand. Are you a fan? Okay, if you are hearing a weird noise, my neighbor is mowing the grass. So you might hear a loud mower coming to, uh, through the microphone. Yeah, because then next time we'll, we'll, we'll try to fix this while we are on the ground. Um, Brandon, I don't think I have enough knowledge to make a comment. I just watched the match, but I don't really know who is the favorite and who will be the one that has more chance to win or whatnot so I have no idea my friend I'm sorry okay we have a couple people around us too I need to improve my camera views a little bit more I set up these but I haven't went back and checked how they look but I see people coming on my tail so that's a good thing and that's the co-pilot build that we can see from the other window and you know, be the co-pilot if you want to all right 31 miles away so what is going to happen when we hit reach the wild VOR when we reach there we will pass over the VR, this display will go blind for a second and then it will start displaying... Oh no! Okay, I told the sim stutter for a second. This, this arrow will point to down, which will tell us that we are fra traveling away from the VR. <coughs> Sorry guys, let me get, get some, some water. And that will be our... Um, you are tr tracking from away from the you are for the rest of the flight until we pick up the NDB signal that will take us to our destination airport. We should pass over Liverpool shortly. Not sure if we can see Liverpool ahead of us. Maybe we can. Steve Emperor, Megazanian, you are still with me. That's good. So we're trying to see if we can point Liverpool below us. Let's climb a little bit and make it down. And let's see. Could that be Liverpool Airport? I'm not sure it is. It is looking like it. But we will, we will pass over Liverpool during this flight. Yeah, I think that's Liverpool Airport right ahead of us. All right. I saw something. Okay, it was there too. I thought this um, smoke textures or these black textures were not there. Uh, that's the exhaust. But apparently, I think I'm mistaken on that one. Anyway, guys, so this is going s quite smoothly, despite the fact that we crashed twice at the beginning of the stream into the desktop. And the flight progress is up top for the indicated airspeed and everything you might be curious about. 89, 88 miles away from the destination, heading is 294, which we already said, and you see it's showing 293, there is a 1 degree uh, difference, 
12,000 feet and we have 30 minutes to our destination and we are doing 211 knots indicated airspeed. Oh yeah, knock on wood, mode 45, I agree. And let's, let me show you something from this view. I tried to set some cabin views, but when I move into the cabin, see what happens here. <coughs> the, the, the curtain is closed, so I cannot open this one to look outside. Maybe I can just maybe move towards the other window to have a wing view and, you know, look to the cabin. But that's what happened. I wanted to have that, that wing view from that window. But we can also do this. We can adjust our view and turn and look through this wing. How does that sound? We we'll still see the engines, part of the curtain. But I want to set some cabin views too. As the cabin, even if it's not in great resolution, it's I think looking very retro and very beautiful to me. So yeah, I might keep this wheel or maybe work on that later on. But let me show you guys the cabin by going to the middle and moving away from the window. Maybe just doing this. So that's the cabin. All the way to the from front to the back. Maybe I should set some cabin views and see that leg room. That that doesn't. I mean, if it's if this is true, this is no match to what we have in terms of leg room in modern aircraft. We don't get to have that much leg room in an aircraft. So I think uh, back in those days, the fly, flying was quite expensive and people paying that much money they thought they deserve more leg room and they gave them more I guess oh yeah I agree Moto 45 this is looking awesome I wish the textures were a little bit high resolution but I think that's due to performance but still it's it's looking great in the ca cabin no digital equipment no in-flight entertainment systems Maybe just a couple magazines, I don't know, for that uh, time when this aircraft was in uh, operation. Ten miles away from our, our cigarette scented carpet and curtains, yeah, sure, right? Ten miles away from our destination, so let's, uh, not destination, VOR station, let's switch to the gyro pilot mode and wait until we pass over that VOR and we will set the course now because it's not going to be affected um, our navigation will stay the same so we'll set the course to 310 which is our final course into our destination airport and the one thing we need to set at this point is the ILS frequency and final approach course we need to keep that in mind and set it when we are there but our localizer frequency is 111.15, so let's tune it as a standby. 111.15 is set here, and we'll do the opposite here. And tune 111.15 so that we know when we start to receive the ILS signal. Okay? Speaking of which, this also tells me that we should start our descent because we are now six miles away from the VOR station so I'm going to take turn off the altitude hold and start to descend at around 700 feet per minute that is my plan and that will increase our speed a little bit because we are using cruise power still until 5000 but that's a good descent rate I'll keep this and let's go outside ICC and oh man, I missed the Liverpool, I guess. Where is the Liverpool airport? Oh, that's the Liverpool airport, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Right there. Okay, the frequency, the ILS frequency is 2 now. 084 is the final approach course, which we will 
take a look. We are still not receiving any signal from the NDB. Thank you, Megazen and Captain. Thanks for your kind words. I appreciate it. I tried to give some more information than I think the other Microsoft Flight Simulator streamers, maybe the famous ones, but I think I have my own style of, you know, keeping it a little bit detailed so that I tell you and give the information on what I, what I am doing and why I am doing it. So that's I like to share. Alright. We started to drift a little bit, looks like, from... Oh no, we are still on track. That needle is still moving. It's, it has to point to the center. Yeah, thank you very much. I'll keep doing it, because I like to do it the way I do it. Yeah, we are still on course. No problems there. Don't worry about the CDI because we changed the course, so it's not displaying the correct information. So we are we are traveling away from that VOR station. Now we can turn because we started traveling away, and the arrow is pointing downwards. We can turn the localizer mode on and get back on course, so that we turn around and get to 310 and start traveling towards Isle of Man I was waiting that needle to turn around and point downwards so now we can get back on track and when you are streaming and speak a lot uh, you don't do many things on time I usually do it a mile after we pass over that we are, I was a little bit late on this one. So let's check the descent rate. We are about to pass 10,000. <coughs> we have roughly 59 miles because the distance from there to Isle of Man was 67. So we consumed 8 miles of that so we are at around 59 miles <coughs> I'm sorry from our destination which tells me that we should be fine on our profile we should get down there on time because we still need to do the teardrop so I'm fine with this descent rate we will keep this and at about 5,000 5, feet uh, we will switch to descent power and set it to 26 inches Artificial flight engineer will set it. Oh, do you see some boats? Let's go and see. I'm curious now. Oh, those are those are the wind uh, wind turbines, I believe. But there might be some boats around too. These are the wind turbines. They are over the sea now. Yeah, I see a lot of wind turbines. There is an add-on that I haven't installed yet that adds uh, moving boats into the simulator, like ships, ships of MSFS or something. Oh yeah, sure. Uh, thanks for joining Megazen and Captain. It was great to have you here and uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you very much. Yeah, but there is an add-on, Model 45. I think it's free. It adds ships, moving ships, on their real routes. I think it was called Ships of MSFS or something. I'll try to find them, make a suggestion on the Discord channel. Uh, if it works, I need to try it myself. I haven't tried it yet. So the descent is still looking good. We lost a little bit of vertical speed, so let's pitch down just a little bit to get back to 700 feet-ish. That will do. And let's go and check around a little bit. See what's happening below us. It's just the sea, nothing more, nothing less. Okay. We'll see how we will land this time. Last time it was on the right side of the runway, we didn't center it, so I'm hoping to do a better landing this time, because 
I'm, I'm, I'm learning a lot more and I know how to manage the speed a little bit more uh, in detail now, which we will speak when we get to that point. Still no signal from the NDB yet. We will start picking it up sometime later. But we are 20 miles away from the VOR, so that means we consumed uh, 20 miles of the distance of 67 nautical miles to our destination. So that's we are 57 miles away. The set profile is looking good. We should get back down to 2000, no problem. Yeah, I want to do it too. Like, maybe we should do a long haul. And let me tell you this, the 747 Salty Simulations mod is bringing some good functions to the 747, which I think I can fly the aircraft more often now. We can do a cross the pond uh, long haul live stream. <laughs> the A320, Model 45, if you are getting hang of the CJ4, a320 shouldn't be that hard to learn and 747 is the avionics in 747 is very similar to CJ4 so you can give it a try and I believe I have a, I have a couple videos for 747 I can record more uh, with the updates to the mod and we will be streaming with 747 in the next world tour series so you get to see it in first place we will be in Norway. Good question. In the next stream we are traveling from Sarajevo to Geneva and this is what I started to do Megazine. I started to ask questions in this stream. Whoever answers correctly gets to choose the next destination and whoever answers correctly to the second question gets to choose the aircraft we will be using to travel to our next destination. So. Uh, be on the look for for the next stream and if someone gets to choose uh, Norway in the next stream we can travel there or maybe you will be the one answering the question correctly to get to, cho to choose the destination next destination Oh yeah, I think I'm gonna jump on Wets in a couple live streams and start doing uh, streams with at least live ATC using Wetsim or IVAO, either one works, I have both membership to both, but I like Wetsim, I used Wetsim more than I used IVAO. Okay, coming close to 5000, so we are going to switch to descent power although we should we should we, we can keep the cruise power just a little bit more we are doing 247 not about 250 knots so we are still good on that part and descending very good very nicely and we have roughly about 30 miles to our destination so let's switch to descent power we are almost at 5000 So this is gonna affect our descent rate probably and the speed should start coming down slowly because we need to slow down for the approach so if you don't switch to the descent power you will be very fast as this aircraft doesn't have spoilers to slow you down or air, air speed brakes rather so we should plan for that as well we need to slow down to 174 knots so that we can start deploying flaps and do the in-range checks and before landing checks. All right, so we are slowing down as we see over here and over there, which is a good sign. 
our descent profile looks great so we can pitch up a little bit and keep it around 700 feet per minute because we're 10 minutes uh, away so 700 times 10 is 7,000 feet right so we are going to be at 2,000 way before that so we can even go lower to maybe 5,000 feet yeah sure Megazen we'll see how good I do this time I'm still learning how to land in this aircraft properly because this is no match to airliners you have to keep keep the nose level you, you, you don't pitch up to slow down so it's a different kind of landing that I need to get used to alright we'll keep 500 feet per minute descent rate all the way down to 3000 about the air for our port hopefully we will be at 3000 and then we will descend down to 2000 Captain Safety welcome I'm glad you made it again you just catched us towards the landing part of the stream I am doing great and how about yourself it's good to see you again You were working? Okay. Then welcome. I hope you can get some rest for the rest of the day today. After the stream we are planning some family fun activity. Uh, they came back last week from Turkey. So we will be doing some uh, family fun. Yeah, from where you live to Ireland, I think A320 sounds like a better option. Uh, model 45. Hi, Matt in 79. Welcome to the stream. And hello to you as well. Guys, I know the Nightbot is bugging you to like the stream, but you know, if you like what you are seeing, you are feel free to do it. Let me shallow the descent. We are at 3000, so we should get back to level flight for a little bit until we reach the airport and as you see we started to pick the signal from the NDB station guys isn't that great so we are tracking towards the NDC NDB perfectly Matin, yes I have a 1070 Ti and I usually use high-end settings with clouds at ultra and I think another setting at ultra I can share at the end of the stream after landing my graphic settings if you are interested. Yeah, he is bugging you to like the stream. I know some people did, but it's not necessary. I mean, it's up to you guys to like or not. Alright, we are going to pitch up a little bit and do level flight because we are at 3000 now. We should maintain the level flight and pitch up before we can descend again. This looks about great and we should wait until we reach to the airport. The Isle of Man. So we are roughly around 10 miles away from the destination I believe. And we are trekking towards the NDB station. We are looking like off course a little bit. Let me tune out of the second frequency so that we see it a little bit better. so that the display goes off so we are showing on course 310 I, I'm tempted to do 39 to get back on course because that needle doesn't seem to look like it's in the center uh, for the NDB needle so we should see that centering shortly anyway we are still descending a little bit so let's let's keep it well, let's keep it like that shall we we can descend slowly down to 2000 no problems there and because now we consumed almost 55 miles of the this distance we are 17 miles away we can do the in-range checks Looks like we are back on track. 
Oh, with the 3060, what resolution you are planning? No uh, Matty. I am using 2K resolution with the 1070 Ti. At high-end settings, uh, let me jump outside. This is what I'm getting in terms of uh, how it looks like in the simulator. Okay, this is what I get. And you'll get to see the airport when we approach. Yeah, 1440p. Yes, that's my settings. And this is this is what I get. So as you see, we are tracking towards the NDV. Just fine. We are on course. Everything is looking at the center. We are descending 100 feet per minute, which is okay. And we will hold the altitude at 2,000 and do the. Uh, before landing checks. Yeah, it's going to be hard to do 4K on 270, 2070. Even I think with the 3070, 4K is pretty hard on the GPU. And I'm not sure if there will be like beneficial difference in the textures. very close guys so we are probably going to switch to the gyro pilot mode right and we will set our final approach course which was 084 okay to get ready for landing final approach course is set we are not picking the signal from our ILS I believe 11115 RV. Oh, looks like. Let's switch to the ILS frequency and turn that radio back down to see the ILS. So that's the ILS beacon. That's the course. So we are we are perfectly fine. So what we'll do when we reach is we will turn left to heading 84. <coughs> I'm sorry, uh, handy 264, and then we will come back, do the teardrop for the ILS. So we're almost there. We are three miles from the ILS beacon, which tells me that we are almost above the airport. Let's turn around and take a look. That is the airport right there. Megazenon is, I believe, on the ground by now. He is right there. So let's keep this view. No, that's the airport. We are coming along. And when we are over the airport, we'll take a right turn to 264. So let me check the heading. So we will be turning to heading 264 towards that side, which means we are going to turn to the left. So let's do it, shall we? Let's turn using the gyro pilot. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm on I'm waiting for the RTX series to come back to regular prices or normal prices as well because they are crazy, way crazy expensive than what they should be right now. So I think 270, we are good now. We should level, and we should be seeing the NDB tracking away from the NDP just perfectly fine at the center. That means we are tracking away from that NDB station. And we will do the teardrop and turn to our final approach course when we are close. Which tells me that I should turn left a little bit more to make it a real teardrop and don't make a sharp turn into the final. And we are we are we slowed down enough to do the before landing checks. So let's do that. Okay, so now we should be flying on course towards the teardrop. We are picking the signal from the ILS, which is good. What I will do is we will travel. So let me see, we need to track outbound. Let me see the distance. 
six miles from the ILS beacon <coughs> and then we will we will turn around for the teardrop for our lane. So we as you see we are doing the gear up and down. So we are almost six miles away from our destination. We are going to manage the speed around 120 knights of approach speed if we we'll take a look at the placard over here. We are at shy of 75 thousand pounds so our approach with speed is going to be 128 and we will worry about the landing speed and slow down a little bit for the for the landing I don't think steam uh, version has any difference from the MS version oh by the way we are coming down to 2000 so we should think about now getting down to and we are at six miles so let's go back to the localizer mode guys so the aircraft will turn around now and we'll hold 2000 feet to capture the glide slope and as you see the glide slope needle is started to display too so we'll pitch up and shallow the descent and hold the altitude around 2000 which is just about there right now Let's hold the altitude and you will get to see how the ALS landing works in this aircraft. So we're turning for final and what we will do is we will turn it to the localizer from localizer to approach mode and it will start tracking the glide slope as well for us. Okay, the speed is coming down to 120 knots nicely. We will worry about deploying more flaps when we get closer to the airport. <coughs> And this NDB station will help us stay on track if something happens to the VOR or uh, VOR navigation, we can use this as a backup. Anyhow, so we are getting there. We are at 2000 and holding 2000, 120 knots, and we will keep flaps 20 until we capture the glide slope. Let's take a look, that's the airport right there, we're making the final turn into our final approach course and the needles should center their cells when we get there, so that is the wrong way, right there we have a little bit more to turn to the right to, s to get on through course Am I looking to the wrong runway? Do we have another runway ahead of us? No, that is the runway. So we should be making another right turn <coughs> to capture the localizer. And we are almost at the distance where we will be capturing the light slope. Four miles. And as you see the needle started and we start we captured the glide slope. We are coming down. So we need to get flaps 30 to keep the speed close to 120 knots so that we don't overspeed and land. Yep, we are established on final, but looks like our course is like what? I'm not I'm not happy with this. I'm gonna take control guys. I'm not gonna use the autopilot for ILS landing because this might be an offset course because we are not dead centered with the runway. I'm gonna I'm gonna take control before it's too late. So Let's do this. Let's disengage the autopilot. I will take control and line ourselves with the runway. And keep an eye on the descent rate by using the propy lights. I might go silent for a little bit because I'm trying to align. And the speed, we will, we will control mode 45. We'll go flaps 40 and I'm pitching up slightly to lead the speed off. And we are too high now, so let's go full flaps control the speed, bring the throttle back down to 90 BMEP this should control the speed nicely that's how I learned to control they say you don't touch the throttles but you do touch the throttles on final to set it and then leave it there until you land so the speed looks nice now we are getting down it's going to be a little bit nosedive type of landing because we didn't align properly 
but we are getting on profile again. We're back on profile. Looks like we must get there shortly. There we go. So now the speed should lead itself off because we are using full flaps. And I will use the rudder to correct the nose, not trying to make any turns here. All right. And we will pitch, start pitching up slowly. Don't land on me, Steep Emperor, please. It looks like that's what you are doing right now. All right. Wheels on the ground. Reversers are engaged. Full reverse to slow down. There we go. I am using the Trustmaster TCA officer pack. So reversers are off, guys, and we will add some power to get out of the runway as quickly as possible. And um, Steep Emperor landed with us too, so that was good to have him side by side. I wish there was two different runways that we can land side by side, which we did with Spooky in one of the streams I remember. So let's do the after, sh after landing checks. Thanks Richard, thanks for staying with us during the flight. Let's see where we are going for the terminal. I think we are going to take the left taxiway and Auto head towards to, to the terminal. So we, deploy, we took the flaps down to normal position after the landing checks are done. All that's left for us to do is do the parking checks and let the passengers out. So let's let's take this turn, slow down a little bit, keep the aircraft turning into the taxiway. Thanks Megazen and Captain, it wasn't too bad. See you next week. Thanks for joining. Alright, so we turned into the taxiway. I believe we'll park somewhere over that building. We'll find the parking spot. Oh yeah, Moto45, I'm thinking about doing a wet stream. If I can find the controller online at the time of the stream that I uh, I scheduled for the live stream, we will definitely do a live stream on wet sim. We'll take a shortcut, guys. We'll go, I mean, let's go through here. Oh, let's go through there. I changed my mind. Let's go through there. Let's see what's waiting for us out there on this side. Thanks, Captain Safety. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. I'm still learning how to land this aircraft, but it wasn't too bad. The, the, the challenge was the ILS didn't align with the runway completely, so I had to take over. Boston Center. Yeah, we can do a US flight on Madsen. I would love to do something like that. Okay, there is the parking spots for us and there is like terminal bending ahead of us should shall we park over there or shall we park over here let's park over there over there there is more room for us to make the maneuver oh yeah we'll do a wet some flight let's plan for the next one shall we moto 45 next live stream on sunday after the world tour live stream we'll do it on let's how does that sound Okay, I think we are parking here, guys, on the roof's right side. And say farewell to Mega Zenin. Because he is waiting for us over here. He landed way before us. So we will park next to this. Uh, what that is? Is it a Beechcraft or something? G58? Yeah, we'll park here. Let's make a look, take a look to the room. Yeah, that is the parking spot that we are aiming for. Look to the front again and like look from the top just a little bit and I don't want to cheat by going outside. I want to see and do this properly. Okay, cut the power. And I think for me this is good enough parking. We'll see how I did by going outside. Let me set the parking brake. Well, I have still some more distance to go if I want to. As you see I was a little bit behind, the tail is hanging, overlapping, so we should better do this and move front a little bit. Slowly but surely. 
I am planning to do the work to launch during the week, but we can change it. It's not set on stone, so if there is a better way of doing it for you guys to join without worrying about work the next day or anything around the weekdays, we can definitely do different. Let's do the parking checks and then we'll go to the ramp manager and do the stairs and the cargo holds. Bar, no problem. Thanks for joining the stream. Appreciate you being here. Okay, so this is the only time I fear like the sim might crash because Microsoft thinks that I'm done and I want to go to the main menu. So I'm rushing to get everything out so that I can let the passengers out. And there is Steep Emperor parking next to us. Alright, let's wait for Microsoft to do its thing and we will see continue, we will say continue and I'm gonna share my graphics settings. Go. Oh. And it is hanging again, so it might crash guys, which it did. Uh, I was expecting this. It happens all the time when Microsoft thinks I'm down. Alright. I'm gonna start it back. I'm not gonna load into the airport but I'm gonna share my graphic settings if you are still around 1979 if you left already I will say goodbye to everybody else and we will be finishing today for now finishing here today for now Which one, whichever you, which one you like to be better, guys? Doing the work tours over the weekends as well, so that we have more time and don't worry about the work next day. Or uh, having a separate day for the. Hey, Moda Forty Five. Thank you. Thank you. I should play that. I don't know. Thanks for the five bucks. Appreciate it. Captain Safety, see you. It's nice to have you here. I'm not sure if OBS will play. Oh, there we go. Model 45, there you are. Let me update this and then let's get your name on there. It should now update the Recent donation to your name, Moto45. Thank you very much, my friend. There you go. There is your name right there. Okay, Moto45. Then we will discuss it on the Discord, right? Let's see what everybody thinks. Then we can switch to like weekend streams. Maybe do it like. Um. Okay. Let's 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 think about this for a second. Maybe we can do it. Um on Saturdays and we do our regular Sunday streams wherever we please to go whatever aircraft we please to use. How does that sound? Saturday night stream? Maybe? If it's better but I don't want to take away your family time if you are being with the family on Saturdays. So that's also my family time as well so we'll discuss it on Discord before the stream comes and we will we will plan accordingly. I think that's the best way to do it rather than scheduling something and hoping people to join yeah next leg is a long haul it shows i think nr 32 minutes flight time with preparations and everything i'm we are looking to almost two and a half three hour stream again i believe with 747 so we might as well aim for a saturday evening for that stream maybe early evening so that you can have the rest of the night for the family like maybe 5 p.m on saturdays how does that sound for the next world tour stream so the sim is already almost loaded and i'm gonna share the graphics settings regardless i don't know if he's still here but this is my graphics settings guys that's the resolution Rendering quality is custom because I have some um, 
ultra settings. This V-Sync is off because my monitor is controlling that. The rest is pretty much high. Eight times anisotropic filtering. Texture super sampling is 6x6. Shadow maps and terrain shadows are 150, 1536 and 1024. The rest is high and I didn't even turn the clouds too high for the stream because it gives some problems, uses too much graphic memory. But what I usually do when I'm flying by myself is I keep the reflections at ultra and the volumetric clouds at ultra. Okay, that's the graphics settings. So, thanks for being here guys, I'm about to take off. As I said, we have some plans to do with the family. And I will be seeing you in the next live stream. Take care, enjoy your rest of the Sunday, and uh, be safe wherever you are in the world. Thank you very much.